uh, basically my um, uh, the reason for my appearance today is the sharing the public comment my colleagues and I made uh, just uh, about two weeks ago in regards to the uh, planned housing project on Baldell Road. Uh, you have the text in front of you and I hope you will be able to take a close look at it in, uh, in the next couple of days. At this point I'd like to just simply summarize the, the important points of this document. As you, I'm sure, are aware of the revised project that we are currently discussing and the environmental assessment in relationship to it actually presents a reduction of 83 homes at the Valdell site when compared to the original proposal, which actually already I wish it still has two phases if you look at the total number of houses. As my colleagues and I noted last August, the area under consideration for this housing project displays unique geophysical conditions so that you have indeed to have to pay attention to the geological and hydrological circumstances in order to ensure or at least address two main issues. On one hand, the safety of potential inhabitants of the new housing units. On the other hand, environmental concerns as the area is where you have the upper Freedom aquifer strike close to the surface, so the proper drainage management is crucial in order to avoid the direct piping of pollutants into the aquifer. There's no filtering basically otherwise. If you don't pay attention to this. The revised environmental assessment fills in gaps that existed until recently uh, since the geophysical report, which formed the basis for the 2013 environmental assessment, was not shared with the public, and since we were denied access to the site. It should be noted that in October of 2013, following our public comment on, of last August, additional geophysical testing was conducted at the Valdell site to further study anomalies that were apparently identified in the earlier environmental assessment. It appears that geologists from an organization referred to as Geohazards Incorporated had in fact called for uh, additional borings or samplings in these areas following their initial investigations were already reported as far back as November 2012, albeit we have no knowledge of those findings. Although we are impressed by the science contained in the current environmental assessment, the lack of transparency in the process which led to the finding of no significant impact raises, as already mentioned last year, a number of questions. It would seem that the landowner and developers feared public scrutiny during this process. Yet the citizens of Lowndes County have a vested interest in the groundwater resources beneath the site, as well as in the overall safety of the housing units in our community. Not allowing access to the site to an independent geological consultant for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer, the environmental branch at Moody Air Force Base, or we issue a faculty with an expertise in hydrogeology and karst topography simply in amongst the trust of the public and the validity of any environmental assessment. In respect to the current environmental assessment, which focuses on the eastern portion of the parcel, the layout of the subdivision has apparently been revised to work around anomalies that were identified by doing electric resistivity readings and that were targeted and also identified, you could say, by these certain kinds of borings or samplings that took place. In order to ensure that all concerns raised in the environmental assessment are properly addressed, the best practice to follow in construction would be to require a licensed professional geologist on site in case subsidence begins to occur as the site is being prepared for construction. We also remain concerned about the hydrology of this site which sits on a recharged zone for the upper Floridian aquifer. In addition to satisfying the legal requirements in this area, the local community needs to be reassured that the aquifer is protected and the mitigation takes care of the functions existing wetlands have in filtering surface waters which reach our groundwater. Last but not least, the current environmental assessment only attempts to establish a finding of no significant environmental impact, but also reiterates, as it did last year, that there is no practicable alternative for this housing project. However, since the project has been reduced to a scope that requires a much smaller area, from originally 173 homes down to 90 homes, why was there no attempt made to seek another location that would have less of an environmental impact, or have less of an environmental risk? Clearly there are alternatives in Lawrence County, but perhaps the question is, who makes the decisions about these at times? Developers or contractors or a commission that has and should have and has for the most part, really as far as I know, the well-being and safety of the citizens in mind. As with the topic that was just brought up by the individual spoken from before me, uh, we have to rely on our county commissioners to ask the right and tough questions and to intervene on behalf of the citizens when it comes to safety and security, whether this is a housing project or a civil pipeline. I do thank you very much.
much for listening. If you have any questions, we're happy to entertain them.